everyone. You guys have been requesting a high Ludina guide, so here it is. This guide has everything that's important to know about her, so I hope you guys enjoy it and learn something. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments or join my Discord channel. Diana's passive is called Moon Silver Blade. Every third order, she cleaves enemies for additional magic damage and returns mana. She also gains increased attack speed whenever she uses abilities. Diana's Q ability is called Crescent Strike. It strikes enemies in an arc and also revealed if the target is not stealth. In the laning phase, you mainly use this ability to last hit creeps and also poke the enemy champions at the same time. Pale Cascade shields Diana for a few seconds and creates three orbiting spears to explode in contact with enemies dealing damage in an area. If all three spears explode, Diana's shield is refreshed. Moonfall passively grants Diana attack speed after spell cast. The active pulls in, reveals and slows all surrounding enemies. Diana's ultimate is Lunar Rush. It teleports Diana to the target enemy and damages upon arrival. If the target is afflicted with Moonlight, the cooldown on Lunar Rush is refreshed. The skill sequence on Diana is always Q, W, R and then E. The reason you always want to max out your Q is because it's your main source of poke, wave clear and it's also the only ability that can reset your ultimate, so having this on a lower cooldown is really important. Next up, we max our W second because it's good for trading and bursting down targets. Obviously, we put points in our ultimate whenever possible, so that means level 6, 11 and 16. Alas, we skill her E. It's good for engaging, but it does not provide her with any upfront damage. The attack speed is very useful later on, so that's why we skill this last. Alright, so for the combos we are just gonna start with the standard one, which is Q plus W plus R. Keep in mind that you don't need to wait until the Q reaches the target, you can actually ult before that and still get the reset. In order to maximize your damage output on Diana, you also want to include the passive in your combo. Uh, you can prepare this by auto attacking anything twice and then you save your last order for the final combo. Sometimes you have to be the one engaging for your team, and if the target is out of range for your Q, you can also engage this way here. The way you do this is R, W, Q, E, and then you pop Sonya's if necessary to buy yourself time until your team is here. Another important thing to know is that you can use your abilities mid dash, for example the R plus E combo. Now this one is very situational, but your R plus W combo is a key combo because the W damage actually hits everyone you pass through so it can be quite useful for clearing mini waves fast. Diana can also use ultimate 3 times during a combo with enough cooldown reduction. This one is also very situational, so you won't be able to pull it off often, but you can do it by hitting the tag with a Q, and then you watch the timer on the left top side of the screen. You use your ultimate right before the timer runs out, and then your Q will be ready again to get 2 more procs on your ultimate. With Diana, you can extend or make some of your abilities faster by using flash. You can for example use E and then immediately flash so your E gets extended to your new position. This one can be useful if your jungler is coming to gank before you get level 6, so this will be your only way to catch the enemy laner off guard. Diana also has this interaction with her Q, so you can also extend it and catch people out of range. Another thing you can do is combine this interaction with her normal combo, and that's going to give us Diana's instant one shot combo. The way you do this combo is you use Q, flash immediately to reposition, then use R, W, E and then you proc your passive if you have a stack. This combo is good especially if your enemies haven't spotted you yet or if they're slightly out of range so they start playing safe because they think you can't hit your Q. Now if you use this combo in close range, it will take around a second to execute it, so there's no way people can react to that. It's really important for every diner player to be able to pull off these combos and know when to do them because they can solo when you the fights. The last combo I'll talk about is the well known R plus Q combo. Personally I would never recommend anyone to practice it because it's very inconsistent to use in an actual game and if you do fail it you're most likely dead. Ok so to execute the combo you have to stay in exact max range of your ultimate and then you use R and Q right after. If you don't stay in the exact same spot, uh, you can still pull off the combo, but then you won't get the ultimate reset. As for summoner spells, you will always have flash. Without flash, you will get camped and destroyed by good players. It also helps her with engages and getting out of difficult situations. For the second summoner spell, you generally want to take teleport. 
There are several reasons for that, with the first being a safe landing phase that allows you to get early bases into difficult matchups so you don't lose any CS. Diana is also one of the strongest split pushers in the game, so having TP is more important when split pushing so you can quickly join team fights from across the map and help out your team. Another popular secondary summon spell on Diana is of course Ignite. It can be a decent pick, but you should only take Ignite if you know that you can get solo kills in the laning phase and snowball that way. The last summoner is of course Smite if you want to play in the jungle. You always want Smite here, else you won't be able to buy the jungle items and lose out on clear speed and experience. Another thing that makes it very fun to play Diana is the fact that she can use so many different runes and item builds. Starting with the most popular keystone, Electrocute. Diana is a burst champion that synergizes really well with Electrocute as she can proc it rather easily, giving her more damage on top of her combos. Taste of Blood is by far the best rune in this tier because of the amount of sustain it gives, making it much easier for you to get through the early laning phase. If you are in an easy matchup, you can easily swap this out for Sudden Impact. Eyeball Collection is basically good on any assassin as it rewards you for playing aggressive by giving more adaptive stats when you get a takedown on a champion or a ward. Ravenous Hunter is quite weak early game, but as you get stacks on it, you'll notice how much health it actually gives throughout the game. This is one of the main reasons people are using the domination tree, just because of how strong this rune is. The secondary tree is a preference thing, but the most popular one is Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm. They give a huge amount of AP, which is perfect for Diana to stay relevant throughout the entire game. The smaller runes are usually 2 times Adaptive Force, and last one being Situational depending on the matchup. Against AD you want Armor, and against AP you want MR. Another really popular rune choice on Diana is Aftershock. It can be proccular E Moonfall and makes her really tanky for a few seconds, so she can counter a lot of damage during that time. It's especially good into assassins like Katarina, Talon, Zed and similar champions because you can pretty much nullify their burst. This keystone is best with Roar and Ashes Diana because it's better with consistent DPS than one-shotting, but it can work with most builds. Shieldbath has great synergy with your W by making you tankier but also deal more damage on your next auto. Second Wind is amazing into champions with a lot of poke with a health regen. If you're against burst champions then you can go for bone planning instead. Revitalize increases your shield and healing, which also has great synergy with your W. Having Aftershock means you will lose out on some damage in exchange for tankier stats. So that's why we opted for damage in the secondary tree to make up for that. Face Rush is a situational keystone that works really well into team comps with a lot of slows. For example against Braum, Olaf, Nessus, Stromble, Celia and so on. Mana Flow Ban helps fill the potential mana issues with the one shot build and if you can manage your mana you can also go for the nullifying orb against heavy AP comps. Then we will go for Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm for the scaling. The secondary tree can be whatever you want, for example Resolve with Defensive Runes or Domination with Sustain from Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter. It could also be Inspiration Chief with Free Boots and Minion Dematerializer. This all comes down to preference, so I suggest trying out everything and see what works for you. Fleet Footfog is a decent keystone that can be great into matchups that you normally struggle against and also make your early laning phase much easier with the Sustain. We have Triumph as it restores 10% of your missing health on takedown which can be really useful and potentially save you against that loud tower shot or ignite take. Legend Tenacity is the best one here for Diana and helps against crowd control. Coup de Cry is the most consistent one out of all three on Diana so that's why we will be using that one always. With Fleet Footwork you'll normally get either Domination Secondary with Taste of Blood and Random Hunter or you can go Sorcery for more damage. Diana is very versatile when it comes to builds. Before I show you the items, it's important knowing that you should never copy the exact same build order every single game. You should always build what's best for your current game to give you the best possible chances of succeeding. The first one is the one shot build, where you rush Spellbinder's first item, which gives you a huge one item power spike. Unlike other AP champions, Dinah can rush Spellbinder's because she isn't as reliant on cooldown reduction and mana, so she benefits greatly from the raw AP that Spellbinder's has. This build is great against squishy team comps as you'll be able to instantly delete them the moment they are within range. Second build is my favorite one which is the Rod of Ages into Nash's Tooth. This is the best scaling build for Diana that turns her into one of the strongest split pushers in the game. She can fight almost everyone in the side lane and destroy objectives really fast. This build can be used in every single game and it also gives you a rather safe landing phase because of the catalyst that later builds into Rod of Ages. Compared to the other builds, you don't get a strong one item power spike because you need to scale first. 
The third build is also a mid game focus build that our other champion Sly Echo also uses. It's a cheap build that lets you buy the items fast and get a massive power spike with 1 and 2 items. The build has great synergy with Diana as it increases her burst damage but also mobility and wave clear allowing her to show in the wave faster and room. If you want to play Diana in the jungle you can use any of the builds I mentioned previously. Use Red Smite for better dueling and Blue for better ganks and teamfights. In the early game as Dyna you can play it two different ways. You can start W level 1 to trade better against melee champions or showing the wave against ranged ones. Showing the wave forces the enemies to farm under the turret so they won't be able to take advantage of your weak early laning phase. You usually show in the two first waves and then you let the minion wave bounce back so you can safely last it without getting destroyed by the enemy jungler. This allows you to get free XP and CS for that level 6 power spike. If you are playing against a very difficult matchup or an aggressive level 2 jungler then you don't want to shove. In that case you can start Q level 1 and use it to last it only. You can of course base early if you have teleport and come back with gold efficient items like dark seal, refillable potion and a control wall. Your goal for the early game is usually to play smart and farm up but you can still abuse some melee matchups by walking up to zone with your W and passive whenever they go for CSing. Especially in lower elos you will be able to get solo kills this way but it will be more rare in high elos so the best way is to usually just to play safe and farm towards your power spikes. Mid game is usually marked by when the outer turrets start falling so people begin rotating around the map for objectives like dragons, heralds and the remaining turrets. Diana is insanely strong at this point as she will have your core item so you can destroy pretty much anyone that steps up too far. You should be able to easily kill most enemy laners but in those few cases where you can, show the wave, look for roams, pick off those O-extended champions in the other lanes or in the jungle. At this point you should also swap out the warding totem for oracle lens because the way you initiate fights are by flanking and you can do that if there are wards everywhere. Having that oracle lens allows you to clear out all the wards and stay out of vision. Your goal for the mid game is to deny your opponents any chance of comeback by focusing down objectives and closing out the game. While Dyna can be quite strong late game with the right build, she still falls off a bit compared to the traditional mage picks due to her assassin playstyle with no escapes. Good players will always have defensive items to counter your damage, so it makes it even harder to play Dyna probably at this stage. If you mess up your combo once in a teamfight, you're pretty much dead, so you have to play it out smart and know when to go in. In teamfights you want to pop the carries, so you have to be patient and get a good flank. Wait out for them to waste important movement abilities and then you can go in to secure those kills. Late game is all about teamfights and big objectives like Baron and Elder Drake so vision is more important than ever as one single death can cost you the game. Diana is of course really powerful in the side lane with teleport as you can take objectives insanely fast so if your teamfighting is bad be sure to take advantage of her speed pushing powers. When you take objectives with Diana you obviously want to do it as fast as possible so always make full use of your passive. You use an ability then you auto attack 3 times then you use the next ability to keep progging the passive attack speed and the cleave. The next thing I'd like to show you guys is the normal cast with indicator and then quick cast. Um, so the difference here is that if you have normal cast with indicator you can see the indicator here right and you have to double click in order to proc the ability. This one can be useful to have when you need to know the exact max range or if you want to only hit a specific creep so you don't end up pushing the wave. And then quick cast is just, she procs it instantly. This one is good if you want to burst someone fast without a delay. Most pro, pro players have both key bindings. Um, what I do is I have my normal cast for indicators bound to my shift Q, shift W, shift D, shift R. And then I have uh, smart cast just bound to my Q, W, E and R. So it looks like this. I highly recommend that you use both. Um, and then the next thing I'd like to show you is the target champion only uh, key button. So you can find it here. It's in abilities and summoner spells. Then you go down, target champions only. I have bound to C, but you can do it to whatever key you like. So what it does is that normally when people dive, they'll always end up hitting the turret when the champion is hiding right behind. It's hard to click on him, right? But if you hold down C, or whatever key you bound it to, then you can easily hit the uh, champion. This can help a lot, especially on Diana, because you end up diving a lot when you get a lead, so... Better make it easier, right? So the next tip here is about Diana's ultimate. So, 
It can either place you behind the target or in front of it and it depends on the E range. So if you are within the range of E then it will place a behind the target like this. But if you are out of E range like here then it's gonna place you in front of the target. It can be really useful when you need to dodge uh, important abilities from the enemies. It's always good to know. You can use Diana's passive to prepare the minion wave to make it easier to last it. Use the passive on the ranged ones and then they will need only one auto after a turret shot. And that wraps up my Diana guide. I hope you guys learned something. Please let me know if this was helpful and thank you so much for watching.